You're listening to You First, the Disability Rights Florida podcast. On our third episode of our series, Accessibility Outside the Box, let's learn about accessibility in fashion. Hi there, I'm Keith, co-host of the You First podcast. We're excited to be back with the third episode of our series, Accessibility Outside the Box, all about fashion. Our listeners have loved the series so far, and we think you'll love this episode too. Definitely. Hello to new listeners and welcome back to returning listeners. I'm Maddie, the other co-host of the podcast. We've covered some great topics so far, but I think we will all be able to connect with this episode. We've all struggled to find clothes that fit well, feel good in, or just are right for the occasion we are going to. However, as our guest will talk about, these everyday struggles for people are heightened when you have a disability. Very true. On our podcast today, we've got Kathy D. Woods. She is the first African-American little person to create a clothing line designed by and for little people. She's leading the way in accessible fashion and pushing the fashion industry to be more inclusive. We're thrilled to have her on. I even got a little starstruck. We hope you enjoy the episode as she shares some insight into her career and shares her personal life lessons and values. Hello, Kathy. Thank you so much for being on the You First podcast today. We're really thrilled to have you on the podcast. So tell us a little about you and how you got started in accessible fashion. First of all, thank you for having me. My name is Kathy D. Woods, and I am the first African-American little person to ever create a fashion line for little people. The reason why I decided to start a fashion line is because of the necessity. There was a lack of clothing that that was accessible for little people. And I, it started with my own struggles, not being able to find the proper clothes that fit. And as a little girl, I watched my mother alter my clothes, all my clothes, on her hand. And I just got tired of paying for costly alterations. And, you know, buying a garment off the rack, and getting it altered, it's like paying double for the garment. So I had been thinking about it for years. And one day, actually, after my son was born, I told my husband, I said, we got to do something uh, for our community to change things in the fashion industry. And what I basically did, I formed a team of well-versed people that were well-versed in the fashion industry, a team of professional people who knew the ins and outs of the fashion industry. And I joined this incubator called Fashion Business, created by Francis Carter. I learned the ins and outs of fashion. I didn't know a thing about how to get started or anything. And I got up under her and my team. And I didn't do a whole lot of talking. I just listened. And once it was time for me to I felt like it was time for me to create the line. That's when I started talking. And that's when I started going to fabric companies and um, talking to manufacturers. And to find out, they weren't willing to do business with me. Because, one, little people, we're not of the mass market. And because we're not of the mass market, they didn't, they just didn't want to do Best with me because we don't bring in the numbers. But lo and behold, my team stuck behind me and I kept pressing and pressing. And no matter the barriers I faced, I overcame them. Finally, I convinced someone to do business with me and KDW was born. Wow. Thank you so much for recounting that history of your brand with us. And it's a shame that this is something that a whole community of folks need, but a lot of people didn't necessarily believe in your mission and believe in what a lot of folks needed. And this Mm -hmm. accessible fashion and fashion for little people is incredibly important. What kind of is the process that you take or had 
taken as you created your brand to make sure that your fashion line was suitable for a lot of little people? Because I'm sure a lot of little people are all different shapes and sizes. So what was that process like to create the line to ensure that it was going to be accessible for all little people? To start, first of all, there are, for those that does, does not know this, that it's over 250 different types of dwarfism. Dwarfism is the medical term. So the best advice that I got and how I started the process, I started with the most common, which mm-hmm. is achondroplasia, which is my type. Okay. And so we had, and with achons, we're also, we're still, it's still different body types with achons. So I just, I, I got fit models. And basically, I started from small all the way up to extra large. And I got all their measurements, and we did a test run. Now, that took, I'll say, about mm, five or six fit parties. Oh, you know, wow. we invited little people to a fit party where they got to try on different garments and the sizes. And once we perfected the sizes, and we basically produce the sizes to fit those five or six different models. And it fell into place. And then after that, we had more fit parties. And then we had like hundreds of fit parties. That's what we knew. We got the right, we got the right sizes. Most of my clothes, in fact, all of them, they fit all the acons to a T, little to no alterations. It also depends on the height of a, a acon. If you have little to no alterations, like with me, I have a little more alterations than a, a acon that will be four nine or or four eight or not four four eight. Uh, yeah, in between four feet and I'll say four feet and under. So we started with, as far as ACOM, we saw it started with the, the highest height. And then we went from there. So it's just like average size people. Most of the time, manufacturers start with an average size person as far as the length, the height. And then they work, the, work their way down, if that makes sense to you. Yeah. yeah. No, that makes so much sense. And I think, like, what, what, like a joyous and exciting process that must have been to be able to continue to work hard on the line, but Mm -hmm. also see in your own eyes how something that you had to experience growing up of having to constantly alter your clothing and Mm -hmm. adjust things that you had bought at, you know, the store to be able to share that, Mm -hmm. share accessible clothing with other folks, knowing that they're not going to have to go through all of those alterations constantly. What did that feel like? How did you feel starting this line and providing little people with the clothing that they've so long needed? It was, it was a dream to come true. Here's the thing. My parents has always taught me, whatever you do in life, do your best. And I'm this type of person and I teach my son this. Hard work pays off. And you're not going to get everything right. And the thing is, as far as the clothing line, because it was a struggle of mine and other little people, instead of complaining, I wanted to do something to change. I wanted to make a change. And I wanted to be that change. I hate complainers. So (laughs) when when there's a problem, I always say, what can we do to fix it? What we what can we do to make the change? So that's what I did as far as the clothing line, the fashion line. What I did was I just turned my struggles into a testimony. I made I made a change. Yeah. And your hard work has certainly paid off for not just mm-hmm. you, but the broader community and accessibility in fashion as a whole. I'm sure folks have seen your work, even if it's not related to fitting for little people, but maybe folks in wheelchairs and things like that who have definitely been able to see your drive and your passion and grow from there and provide some inspiration, for lack of a better word, to mm-hmm. continue to 
push for these things in their own communities. So could you talk a little bit maybe about what the highlights of your career have been so far and what really exciting thing do you see on the horizon? Oh my goodness. One of the highlights of my career is being invited to the White House by the Obama administration. Wow. Twice. Wow. In recognition of my work. And then I was there the first time during 88, the anniversary of 88. And then the second time I was invited and I was on a panel. I was on a, a panel, a fashion panel with the uh, Tommy Hilfiger CEO and a uh, Nike CEO. Wow. What that did for me was show me my hard work paid out to be invited with such a elite panel that to be on a panel with, you know, elite people who was making a difference in other people's lives. And then I got to see a, a broader, not just a broader community, a, a broader community of the disability world. It was just not little people. It was all kind of people in the disability community. And, I, and that's what I loved. And what, what I felt like, finally, our voices are being heard. Are they heard enough? No. Right. Absolutely not. However, I, I think we've made some progress. And that's all that matters. And it's still, we still have work to do. We still have work to do. But I just, that is one of the highlights of my career. Yeah. Yeah. That is incredible. That At beating Barack Obama. Yeah. I wanted to meet with Michelle Obama, but I think that day she wasn't there, but. I would have loved to meet her. And that's actually one of my dreams is to meet her and to meet one of my favorite designers is Diane Von Furstenberg. And because she's actually the inspiration why I created the Raptors, even though she's the original creator, but with little people body, with our figures, a rap dress complements our figure. Mm -hmm. And actually, everybody needs a wrap dress in their closet. <laughs> I'm serious. Every mm -hmm. woman needs a wrap dress in their closet. Yeah, That's the best thing Diane Von Furstenberg could have ever created for women. Yeah, I would love to meet her. I would love to meet Michelle Obama. And another person I would love to meet is Shaquille O'Neal. I want to have a conversation <laughs> with him. And let me tell you why. One, he would get, with all of the things that I'm doing in my community, because he's not of the average size of the normal size, he has to get things specially made for himself, whether that's clothes, whether that's a home. Mm -hmm. he, would, he, he understands our, our, our pain. So I would love to meet with him and just have a conversation with him. And how he could use his voice to help change some of the things in our community. Yeah, that's a little off subject, but. Oh, no, it's not necessarily off subject. I think what's so powerful about your mission and your reach as far as being able to attend something at the multiple things at the White House and meet these folks is that you are expanding your, your influence. And mm -hmm. I don't think that these dreams and folks that you really want to meet and connect with is far from your fingertips. Mm -hmm. And I think what's important, hopefully, Michelle, hopefully your fashion icon and Shaquille, they're all listening to this podcast and Let they'll you reach something. out to you. <laughs> if they reach out to me, I would just, I would be no good. I'd be great, very grateful and thankful. Mm -hmm. But I don't have to do nothing else in life. <laughs> <laughs> and and the reason being, let me say this too. I'm the type of person again. I like change. I like to make change. Instead of complaining, I like to make things happen. And those three people who I named, 
has made things happen. They have made something in their life inspire them to make a change in the world. Their struggles have made them, have inspired them to make a change in the world and to pay it forward. Mm -hmm. That's what my family is about. See this shirt? Life in the woods. We want to help you understand. I love that shirt. Thank you. That's, That's our brand. That's what we do. We do things to help people. We pay it forward. And we make changes. One of the things that we have, we have a, a nonprofit. My son, we're trying to change things for him. He, he has Asperger's. So he's in the disability community. So we, we try to make things we change for him. Whatever we do, what we want to do, we want to show people and we want people to see the God we talk about. So that's it. Yeah, your advocacy for your family, for your community, for your son will have a lasting impact to come. And for folks that are listening, how can listeners advocate for accessible fashion and encourage and kind of push forward this whole realm and opportunity and growth in the fashion industry? For one day, reach out to fashion company and express the need and have a plan to meet the need. I've talked to Quite a few people in the fashion industry met a lot of people in the fashion industry. And one of the things that I ran up against is that they couldn't see past the numbers. And the reason why they, most business people, they don't care about nothing else. All they care about is numbers. Most people in the fashion industry, because numbers going to make them money. Right, right. And they fall short of meeting the need. And get enough people to complain and to make people understand, just like my shirt says, I want to help you understand. Then if you can convince them and and try to help them understand, then I think they will be open to change. And and they would try to make a change because a lot of times, too, I think when you're in your comfort zone, and this is what I mean by people in the fashion industry, if you're in your comfort zone and then when you introduce to something new, and I think listening to other fashion designers, they don't want to fall short. So if it's something they don't have to address. They won't address it because they don't want to look bad. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I think that's what that that's what's part of the problem. They don't want to right. address the need. They don't want to go outside their comfort zone, which it's really not that hard. Right? It's really not that hard. I guarantee you this. Let me take what I what I, I think it's gonna take to change. If a fashion designer had a child with dwarfism, that would change a lot. Hmm. And the reason why I'm saying that, what is her name? Mindy, I can't think of her last name. She ha- is runway of fashion. Well, how she changed things in the fashion industry. Her son was born with cerebral palsy. Mm. I think cerebral palsy. And she had a hard time finding clothes for him. So she partnered with Tommy Hilfiger. And she changed everything for the fashion industry. So now she has all different types of disability on her runway. Mm-hmm. So I say all of that to say, when you don't experience certain things, you don't know, you don't know to walk. Average-sized people don't know how to walk. Or average-sized people, I mean, people without a disability, they don't know how to walk. Mm -hmm. So they, they can care less. 
So I think if people complain and knock on the doors of the fashion designers, they will make a change. It, I think they will be willing to change. And they're starting to change, mm-hmm. but we need more change. <laughs> we need more change. We do. Yeah. Yeah. You touch on such a powerful topic of empathy and community and how having folks doing this advocacy, getting their kind of their foot in the door, their wheel in the door, what have you, to be able to connect with these folks. And it's not just the disability community that needs to do this advocacy. It's the fashion industry needs to put in the work as well to be able to connect with the communities, all communities that need their fashion in in a way that's accessible for them, approachable for them, and that people need that personal experience to get to it, to feel that empathy, to feel that need and that purpose to Mm -hmm. create whatever it is, whether it's fashion, whether it's any other realm of our society, to feel what the community needs and provide that need. And I think, you know, that's a perfect message to inspire folks listening to take their next step, their next move, to continue to advocate for not just fashion, but anything across the board to be the change that they want to see. One of the things that I teach my son is that because you're different, we're all, everybody is different. Nobody is the same. We, some people have different hair color. Some people have long hair, short hair. Some people have different skin color. We're all different. But here's the thing. Just because we're different, we are to treat people the way we want to be treated. That is with anything. I don't care if you black, white, gay, I don't care. You treat people the way you want to be treated. Whether you believe in what they're doing, it doesn't matter. You treat people the way you want to be treated. And you treat people with compassion and kindness. And if, that's why I say, when you treat people the way you want to be treated, that goes a long way. Then you can see beyond, you can see beyond the person's need. Then you can kind of have some compassion. This little person needs, this person in the wheelchair needs this or that. If you can see past that, then you would know what people need. Yeah, so that's it. Well, Kathy, it's been absolutely wonderful to have you on the podcast and hear about your experiences and all of your trials and tribulations and aspirations for the future. And we are looking forward to following you and keeping up with all of your hard work and beautiful fashion, by the way. Thank Um, you. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be sure to promote your stuff when we share the podcast. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me. It was my pleasure. It was my pleasure. Thank you, Kathy, for being our guest on our third episode of Accessibility Outside the Box. We hope you enjoyed the episode. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast. We're on all podcast platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Amazon, YouTube, and more. You can also find us on our website at disabilityrightsflorida.org forward slash podcast. We will be back next Thursday for our new episode. Thank you for listening to the You First podcast or reading the transcript online. Please email any feedback, questions, or ideas about the show to podcast at disabilityrightsflorida.org. The You First podcast is produced by Disability Rights Florida, a not-for-profit corporation working to protect and advance the rights of Floridians with disabilities through advocacy and education. If you or a family member has a disability and feel that your rights have been violated in any way, please contact Disability Rights Florida. You can learn more about the services we provide, explore a vast array of resources on a variety of disability-related topics, and complete an online intake on our website at disabilityrightsflorida.org. You can also call us at 1-800-342-0823. Thank you for listening to You First, the Disability Rights Florida podcast.